The gentleman from Minnesota is recognized for uh, one and one and a half minutes. And let me thank the chair for uh, his shepherding this critically important piece of legislation to the floor and getting us to this point. Um, Mr. Speaker, I am very grateful that the, uh, that the chair and all the uh, members of the committee were able to include in the manager's amendment what I believe is almost the very heart of the problem here, and that is that people who qualified for, for certain kinds of loans were steered to loans that made certain other folks more, more, uh, more wealthy, and uh, other parts of the uh, of people who were, who were out to seek loans had their credit ratings mischaracterized. Sometimes people had appraisals that were false and not true, and then, of course, people who were eligible for certain loans were literally discouraged from shopping around to get a better loan. This, this type of steering is, is not amb ambiguous. It's not middle of the road stuff. It is just wrong. And I'm glad that the manager's amendment is going to direct the, uh, the, the secretary to promulgate rules that will put certain no-nos into the, to the bill that would prevent steering. I think steering, if we had not had the level of steering that we had, we would not have the number of subprime loans, some uh, exotic subprime loans that we had, predatory loans. And if we didn't have that, we very likely would not be at the depth of, uh, of trouble that we're in right now. So I'm very happy that this is included in the Manners Amendment, that we will have some clear, clear don'ts uh, uh, that we will ask uh, rules to be promulgated on prohibiting mischaracterizing of appraisals, prohibiting discouraging shopping around, prohibiting mischaracterization of credit uh, scores and others. So Gentleman's thank you, I yield back. Gentlemen's recognized for five minutes. Uh, let me first of all thank my friend from Colorado uh, who has worked diligently. He's an excellent legislator and was a fine lawyer and I think still is licensed to practice law. And so it's a pleasure working with him. On this issue, unfortunately, we don't quite see it the same. And I think that the 90-day provision is fine and should remain in the bill as it exists now. To cut down by 60 days the opportunity for a renter to find a new place to live after they may have done nothing wrong, pay, made every payment, paid every penny on time, really is not fair and is not good for public policy. The fact is, is that when a house goes into foreclosure, that home, is best that neighborhood and that home are best preserved by keeping the occupant in there. If they are required to leave after just 30 days, which is very, very fast, that means that we could end up with an empty building where it is subject to carp, uh, for copper strippers, to uh, it'll be an attractive nuisance for people who want to commit perhaps crime. It will be a very difficult and bad situation. And we know that once a house goes into foreclosure and then is not occupied, that is a direct blow to the property values of people who live everywhere in the neighborhood. So this provision, this 90 days, actually makes a lot of sense. It should stay in harmony with the bill as it exists and not be reduced. I will acknowledge appreciation that the author of this amendment does allow for 30 days. I appreciate that. But I think it should be more. It should be the 90 days that is already there. This, this, this amendment, if adopted, would work to penalize the one person who has not had anything to do with the foreclosure crisis. Not, they, have, they were not party to, to the foreclosure. They were not party to the mortgage in the beginning. They weren't party to the securitization, nor did they engage in any derivatives or anything like that, which have brought us to this very difficult point. The fact is, the tenant, the tenant who may have been paying every, every, every rent, every, every month, month after month, has no control or responsibility over the owner who may have uh, violate who may have violated certain conditions of the mortgage agreement and in, in this extra 60 days that this that the existing bill that, uh, ex uh, provides is is not a, m a major detriment to the lender and let me just also say um, the fact is is that the the individual th this is not just an individual problem and to take a very legalistic view of this problem and say well they're not in the chain of title therefore they're out ignores the fact that this problem of foreclosures has spread across the nation, is a community problem, is a problem of everyone, not just a narrow, fixed, party-to-party -party agreement. And therefore, there needs to be a solution that takes into consideration a broader interest as well. So I will yield back the balance of my time. And again, I thank the gentleman from Colorado. Oh, I reserve the battle of my time. And I, th again, thank the gentleman from Colorado 
uh, for his diligent work on this issue. Gentleman from Minnesota. Let me just point out that tenants are hard hit by this foreclosure crisis, even though the mortgage is not their responsibility. As of February 2009, at least 20 percent of the properties in foreclosure were rental properties and roughly 40 percent of the families facing eviction due to foreclosure are tenants. Only seven states and the District of Columbia provide clear protection for tenants. The fact is that the, if this amendment is adopted, it will add to the pain of some tenants when we don't have to do it and the 90 days in the bill is more than adequate and 30 days is too short. We will put pressure on our homeless shelters if we adopt this amendment. We will put pressure on uh, families who really had no part in making this foreclosure crisis occur. So I yield back and I thank my friend from Colorado.